Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Liliana and on this channel we discuss history and literature related topics. So make sure to subscribe if that interests you. So in today's video we're going to talk about something that I've done and encountered recently that I think is important for all of you to know. I think this is a great thing to have on your college resume to have under your belt once you graduate from university. This thing is of course the independent study. I'm going to be telling you guys what it is and how you can go about getting one for yourself. Independent study is somewhat like an internship. It's something that you do on your own time, not within a classroom setting, and you record your hours and what you've done for that independent study or internship, and you report back to a professor or a mentor. Independent studies are different than internships because internships often occur outside of school, whereas an independent study happens with a professor at your same school. Now, why is an independent study important? Well, the first obvious answer is it shows that you did something like an internship, that you did something outside of your regular prescribed schoolwork that you take in a typical semester. And while that is true, it's a little bit more complex than that. Usually when there's an independent study, you're the one who has to reach out to the professor and organize it yourself. For independent study, it's you independently designing what you want to learn and how you want that semester to go. So I think taking one is important both in the academic and in the career world. Is that you're able to put together a plan for learning and that you're able to commit and go through with it. It also shows that you have the desire and the initiative to learn about a topic that's not necessarily within your prescribed school's catalog, something that's unique and outside of your everyday, day-to-day -day schoolwork. This semester, I'm taking an independent study course in Latin with a professor at my university. And it's so beneficial for me in my education, I think really furthers me in my future career. I want to be a medievalist, and several graduate programs that I've looked at require that you already have some knowledge of Latin before entering. So you can see that this is something that is necessary and a perfect fit for me and what I want to do. So how do you go about making an independent study? First of all, you have to decide what it is you want to study or learn about. I wanted to study Latin, but maybe you want to study the geology of a certain region. The thing you want to do is go look at your university's course catalog and see if they offer anything similar to that. If your school is offering a class that's very similar to what you want to have your independent study in, there's a 90% chance that they won't let you do it because they already have a class on it. Also check out classes that are similar and see if any of those can suit your needs. So the next thing you want to do is find a professor whose area of research is in the same field and similar to whatever it is you're trying to study on. Obviously, if you're going to be doing an independent study, you want your sponsoring professor to be somebody who can help you out when you're confused about what to do or who can give you advice on how to best complete whatever it is you're trying to complete. I would also recommend looking up this person on ratemyprofessors.com because even if their field is kind of within the range of what you're wanting to do, if they're not a friendly person or they don't like teaching that much, then they're probably going to say no and then it's going to be awkward. You're going to feel bad for having asked them or even if they do say yes, they're just going to like make it hard for you and then you're going to regret doing it. Please, if it's a professor that you don't know, you haven't had a class with them, check rate my professor to make sure that they're an agreeable person, somebody that you think you can work with. Though I do think it's better to take a class with that person first because I think it's very uncomfortable for you to just go in and ask them. But generally try to look for a professor in that field who you already know and you feel comfortable with, or if not, take a class with that professor so that you can get to know them and get to feel comfortable with them. When my independent study started, I wasn't even trying to do one. I was asking my professor a question about languages and grad school because he had told us in class that he had had to learn these languages in order to get his master's and that he had been tested on them before graduating. And so I was kind of wanting to hear his perspective and his experience so that I could get an idea of how to guide my own learning of Latin. So we were talking about Latin, and then he told me, well, if you want to learn Latin, the best way to go is to probably do an independent study in Latin for a semester. I definitely think it's a good idea to sit down and have a conversation with the professor beforehand because it is very helpful. Discuss with them the reasons that you have for wanting to study this thing and how you think it can help you in the future and see where that takes you. You will find most of the time that you will end up with something very different from what you first expected. Now we get to the serious hardcore stuff. You've decided what you want to study. You've contacted a professor. You guys have both decided that yes, we're going to go through with this independent study next semester and it's going to be great and I'm going to help you study this. Now what do you do? 
The professor that I'm working with asked me to make my own syllabus. He did this because an independent study, like I said earlier, is supposed to go at your pace and it's supposed to be about how you want to learn and what you want to learn. It's a good idea to do this even if your professor hasn't asked for it. It allows you to organize your thoughts more and figure out what precisely it is that you want to do with this up and coming semester. It gives you a clear and detailed idea of what you want to be doing from week to week, like what materials you're going to be using, what books you're going to be using, what resources you're going to be using. And it'll also help your professor because if they don't have a clear idea of what it is that you want to do, it's going to be a confusing semester. So it just kind of helps keep everything more organized. As you can see right here, I created my own syllabus using the textbook that my professor selected as reference. And I kind of went week by week and I decided that I would do two or three chapters in the textbook per week. And at the end of it, I would have finished 82.5% of the book, which I think is pretty good for a semester. This is just me being extra. You don't have to do this unless you want to, but I color coded the chapters based on how well I understand the content, not going for a teacher's credential or anything like that. But I do know people who are education majors and they talk all the time about how hard it is to make lesson plans and how frustrating it is when you have to change things at the last minute. And this is kind of the same thing, but instead of doing it for other people, you're doing it for yourself. Even if you just have a simple schedule where you just kind of give a small sentence about what you're gonna be doing that week, it really helps to solidify the independent study in your mind. Then literally every week you're gonna be like, I already read that chapter in the book and I already watched this documentary, so what do I do now? Okay, so now that we've covered that, let me show you what I do for my independent study. Basically, I have two textbooks which are, like I said, ones that were assigned to me by my professor here. This one is the main textbook where you have your vocab and your grammar rules and whatnot. And this one is the workbook where you have your blank exercises to fill out. And like I showed you guys earlier, I have a schedule for each week of the semester in which I list which chapters I'm going to be doing that week. So this week I had to do chapters four, five, and six, which are on the second declension and neuter adjectives, first and second conjugations, as well as the verbs sum and posum. So I did those chapters this week. And so then after I go through them and read them, I go to the corresponding chapter in the workbook, and I basically get to pick whatever work I want to do. It's not assigned to me by my professor, he doesn't even give any suggestions on which assignments I should do. I'm basically just allowed to do whichever ones I want. So technically, if I wanted to, I could just do this one, which is super easy. But of course, that would defeat the purpose of me wanting to be able to learn and somewhat master this language. So I just kind of go through. So I look at the assignments that I think are in areas that I'm not very strong in, and I do those ones. I also make a conscious decision to ignore the exercises that I think are easy, that I already understand, or ones that are basically a repetition of other exercises because I don't want to be redundant and I don't want to waste my time reviewing things that I'm already comfortable with or doing duplicates of assignments because they're basically the same thing. So today I did chapter 6, I just showed you guys chapter 5, but this is chapter 6 and what I did this morning actually before my class started. I also make notes, I think I showed you this in my last video, but I also make notes of main like grammatical things like what person number and tense is, and here I have my charts for the different cases, and here I have my charts for the different tenses, and so I make note of big important things like that that I need to refer to constantly. But what I do is I scan them on my phone and then I send them to my professor. He has the answer key so he reviews them, and then after he's done with that, he basically gets back to me and tells me which sections I messed up the most on so that I know for the next time to pay special attention to those sections because I'm struggling with them. In my independent study, I have a meeting with my professor once a week, like an actual meeting. But from what I've seen with other students, not all independent studies are like this. Some professors don't make you have a formal meeting time and you'll they'll just email back and forth with you, but others do prefer to have a formal class session every week or maybe more than once a week, depending on what the two of you want to do. 
There are some things to warn you about though, if you're going to do this, is that first of all, this is accredited class, so you're going to be graded and it's going to affect your GPA. That's why I would say to be careful with it and don't put too much on yourself or do something that you think you won't be able to get done in one semester because if you do poorly, it will mess up your GPA and that you'll probably feel worse about it. One other thing that I have to warn you about is that your university might charge you extra for doing this. It doesn't happen in my case because what we have at my school is a credit threshold. So you get charged at the same price and it doesn't matter how many units you have until you cross that threshold, which I think is 18 or 20. So if you're going to be doing this, you should also check and see if your university has a similar policy about credits and units so that you can see if you're going to be going over and if you're going to be charged extra and then you can evaluate if that's something that you want to do or not. I'm still a little bit new to this myself so right now I'm mostly just telling you guys about how to get it started, how to find a professor to work with, but if this video interests you and you'd like to see more like it then I will try to make some later on in the semester about what it's like actually being in an independent study so that you guys can see it and decide if it's the right thing for you. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so that you can see when I put out a new video. Bye!